Welcome to the Abundant Accountant Podcast. This is where accounting professionals, just like you, come to learn the most efficient and powerful ways to grow their firm, sharpen their sales skills, and have consistent increasing revenue year over year. We cover topics from sales, networking, handling objections, negotiation, pricing, finding those ideal clients, and how to get rid of the ones that just don't suit you and how to set those boundaries. So you can stop giving away your time, working for free, putting yourself on sale, and really start to get paid for the value and the worth that you bring to your clients. You'll learn tips, strategies, as well as hear others from personal interviews from successful accounting professionals. This podcast will show you exactly how to create the firm and life of your dreams full of abundance. And before we welcome our very special guest to today's show, if your accounting practice is not where you want it to really be, I get it. So many of my accounting clients that come to me are stuck, frustrated, circling the atmosphere of fear. And you know, what I've found is that it's typically because we're not charging what we're worth. And then we don't have a solid plan or system to work through to attract and work with high paying clients. So that's why I created the selling without ever selling system, without being bothersome, without being a nag and without harassing a soul. And having this information in your hands will give you the confidence to really position yourself as the expert, get consistent, high quality referrals and revenue coming in your door. So if you want to build your firm, Feel confident to sell high value services with ease so you can spend more time with your family and have the abundant life you've always dreamt of. Then head on over to theabundantcall.com and book a session with me. Let's discover together and explore what challenges and cracks that you have inside your boat, which is your accounting firm. Where are the leaks happening? So once again, head on over to theabundantcall.com. Now, today on the Abundant Accountant Podcast, we have a very special guest. She has over 15 years of experience, and her name is Tatiana. Tatiana helps ambitious dreamers get to know their numbers, get their taxes under control, and reduce their anxiety. She is also an author, and she calls herself a visionary of numbers, I think is what she said. She wrote a book for entrepreneurs. So if you're an accountant, who works with startups, this book is a great gift that you could give when you onboard clients. It's called Dream Bold and Start Smart. It's a step-by-step guide to bulletproofing a business idea and setting it up right with the strategies and finances to not only survive, but to thrive. So you can get that on Amazon starting uh, now for pre-orders, but it will be in your mailbox on March of 2021. So let's welcome Tatiana to the show. Hey, Michelle. Hi, it is awesome to have you here, Tatiana, on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. As always, this is going to be a really fun story for all of you who have these fears that are bubbling up inside of us, right? We're in these like fight, flight, fear, freeze mode all the time. But Tatiana, before we get into your story and what you've overcome and where you're at today. Can you share with everyone who you are, where you're at, because you're an East Coaster and maybe like where you're originally from too, because that's very unique. And what is it that you also have created in the last couple of years? Sure. So I usually introduce myself as an author and a visionary accountant. I also position myself as a numbers expert. I have had my practice for about 15 years I mean, it evolved. I started out as a bookkeeper, but I serviced a number of firms, learned accounting in the meantime. So like at the same time I was going to college, I had my own little business and then kind of went into the CPA firm to get, you know, some tax experience, license requirements, whatever. Everybody does that. But then I realized that I will always want to be my own boss. And time came when I got pregnant to really start my own tax and accounting practice. So continue my practice, but kind of add the tax aspect to it. And that's what I've kind of had for the past about eight years or so. And then the past two or three years that actually, since we've met, I've completely transformed my practice. And I've also written a book that's coming out next year and built a a little academy where I train business owners or aspiring business owners to actually 
skip the mistakes and skip the failures and, and learn the right way and do it the right way. Very cool. Now your book, who is it for? So, you know, there might be an accountant listening right now. And we're going to definitely get back to how you always wanted to be your own boss and what it took to get there and what you've created in the last couple of years, because it is pretty amazing, just so you guys know. But who's your book for and where can they get it as this could help their clients? Yeah, before I tell you who the book is for, I want to tell you kind of a little bit about how the idea for this specific book came about. And it's very relevant for other accountants and um, and non-accountants who are listening because many especially accountants will feel the pain that I felt um, <laughs> for many years. And so what kind is, of pain? Uh, Can you be more specific, please? It's, I think it's a cocktail of pains. It's good. Now let's go through the cocktail of pain. This is the cocktail that you don't want to buy at the bar. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So like the frustration pain, the anxiety pain that a business owner goes through, the not knowing what to do next, not knowing what to do in general, how to proceed, how to address all things, money, numbers, and taxes. And all of those pains, actually, we as accountants perceive them a certain way, but then our clients see them in a different light. And the what I've seen was, you know, heartbreaking often, especially people who are just starting a business or already started and had to shut down or weren't making money and, and lost money. Yeah, let's let's get one specific story. Who's the one that stands out the most that you saw that they went through the worst cocktail of pain that any entrepreneur or business owner could endure? Who was that? <laughs> it's a client of mine and uh, her name is Angela and obviously its name was changed and everything. But before even starting that specific business, the watch business, she had a pretty bad experience with partners in her other businesses prior to that. And so there was some aggravation already at that time before she started this new company. And this new company, the product that they were producing was very interesting and unique and beautiful and had a really personal touching story that I can't reveal. <laughs> but basically uh, the business, she put her heart and soul into this business and she has put in all of her savings into promotion and marketing and brand building and raising brand awareness and brand loyalty and everything. Mm -hmm. And three years into the business, she still was losing about 80 to a hundred thousand dollars a year. And there was no control over ad spend. There was no ROI calculations. And about three years into it, they've gotten a, sort of a, a quasi investor, investor who was also, also helping them grow, helping, helping that business grow and develop and provided some cash infusion when it was needed and so on. And about kind of sounds like me. <laughs> this sounds like my previous life, Tatiana, with my company Fitzy Foods that tanked. All right, keep going. I'm like, is Angela Michelle? <laughs> well, uh, no, but you can be my story for the next book if you want. Sure. I'd love to be your story. I have a great one it's called my $2 million MBA program. Awesome. So then a couple of years into it, the business was still losing about a hundred thousand, <laughs> sometimes 140,000 a year. So now it wasn't just her money. It was also an investor's money. Mm. And in the end, after maybe five or six years into it, she actually quit the company that she built. Yes, the product is phenomenal. It's beautiful. It's touching. It's, it's unique, but it turned into this cash eating monster and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking for her. And it was heartbreaking for me. So your book is that. for others who have gone through the emotional cocktail and who had a cash eating monster. It looks like I needed your book, Tatiana. <laughs> oh, God. So for those folks, there's another book called Profit First. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had said that the other day at ProfitCon. I sponsored ProfitCon, right? And I told Ron, I think maybe you were there. I was like, uh, yeah, I should have had, Pro I didn't even know about Profit First. Five. That was probably three and a half years ago. I had a close at March of 2017. So I should have probably had that book like uh, in 2010, 11 or 12, but I don't think it was around then. Maybe it was. But yeah, I, it might have saved the day. Yeah, yeah. So my book is for someone who is starting out, who has a business idea, but 
is afraid or cannot afford to to fail, cannot afford to get to that point that Angela got to. How much did Angela lose in total with the investor money and her own, granted her time, but in total amount of money? Probably close to 800000 Got it. All right. That's pretty, that's a lot. I Yeah, my story is very similar. I feel like I should really know Angela, but okay. So your your book is for the people who are starting out. So maybe an accountant who is working with startup clients, you know, those people with this idea that are like, well, I can't afford your bookkeeping services because I don't even have any sales yet. Like th- those people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing is that the reason I wrote this book initially was because my practice has gotten to a point where my services now are very expensive and only companies who understand what I can do for them, what we can do together, actually hire me because they see the return on investment. They see my service as an investment in their company. Because of that, I no longer work with people who are just starting out because honestly, it takes a lot of time, a lot of questions, and the questions are all the same. So I wanted to write a book so that, and it serves both the accountants and the business, future business owners, aspiring business owners, because it actually allows them to get the expertise like mine in a more affordably and it's more accessible so that they can skip all that anxiety, mistakes, failures, money waste, and actually save that money, make the right moves, grow their business, and actually then be able to hire someone like me or a firm like mine to help them because they'll be able to afford it at that time. Yeah. Instead of the cocktail pain, they could have the cocktail of success. <laughs> <laughs> and bypass the heart surgery. So, okay, Tatiana, that's beautiful and lovely, but I think we all need to hear a little bit more about you because when you and I met, it was probably two or three years ago, you were going through a lot personally. You were going to enroll in a program called Certified Tax Coach with Dominique Molina. You and I were on the phone. I can't remember all the things you told me, but you were fear was at its peak, right? I think skepticism was up there too, but share with us the reason you are getting an ROI for your current clients and you are really pricey and you only work with bigger companies is because you really got specialized on the technical side of your knowledge and got really niche too. So can you share a little bit about those fears that you had a few years ago and how you've changed your business in the last three years? Because I know you've had your business eight years, but my guess is your percentage of growth has increased substantially, right? Yeah. What's your growth in the last three years from when we first spoke to where you're at now? It it tripled. Tripled. Okay. So where were you when we first spoke, you know, where, where a lot of people listening might be able to relate to you? Yeah. Because I tell this story sometimes and often when I talk to colleagues who are, who feel stuck or or whatever, it really helps them. So I'll share kind of my story. So up until 2018, so I've been in practice by then, early 2018, I've been in my practice for about six years, five or six years. I sort of had this goal to have a practice of, let's say, two to $300,000 gross revenue, be on my own, not hire any, anyone, Because as my husband says, when you hire people, their problems become your problems. And (laughs) also I've, I've ended up putting a lot of labels on myself. I always told myself, you know, I'm not really good at sales. I hate sales. I'm not good at, I'm not a good writer. I suck at writing and, and other, other things. And in the past three years, I've destroyed each and every one of those labels that I've created for for myself on my own with no help whatsoever. And it's the mindset shift that I've experienced that when in 2018, I knew that I wanted to be on my own. And I kind of was stuck in that mindset that I don't want to hire other people, that I'm comfortable doing everything myself and so on. And then I kind of got into this webinar by Dominique. So I listened to it. It sounded great, but it also sounded a little too good to be true. Mm-hmm. So then we, So then you and I met, and this was in about August of 2018. You and I met and basically we had this conversation and I was in that mindset of not being able to afford a lot. I was making decent money, um, decent projects, some clients, but 
we barely financially survived because I quit my CPA farm job because when I got pregnant, so I wanted to be more home. So I basically built my practice from ground up. And we spoke and I had a lot of, like I said, my own labels that I've are completely my own fault. And people who are listening might also be kind of in that mindset. So hopefully my story will help them really see that there is a, a, another way. So after you and I talked, I ordered Dominique's book, uh, Get Paid What You're Worth. And you did not sign up for Dominique's class and enroll in CTC. And I'm just putting this out for the record. When we first spoke, there was a lot of a lot of fear. You know, at the call, I knew that this was the right thing for me. But honestly, I had a lot of concerns uh, that I'm not going to go into, but I didn't sign up. That's the bottom line. And I did get the book. And in the book, as I was reading it, there was this one place where Dominique shares her story and says, well, I always wanted to be on my own, but I realized that if I'm only, it's only me that I'll never be free. And it just dawned on me. I was thinking, oh my God, this is me. <laughs> and I thought, I'm never going to be free. And that was kind of that little push that I needed. And then interestingly enough, in about two weeks from then, Intuit announced their firm of the future finalists. And my firm, a one woman show, made it to the top 15, one in three US companies. And I got some prizes and I got my client got a prize and everything. Mm. So that was both of those things or three of those things, speaking to you and then um, reading the book and then this, this thing happening, I knew that there was something bigger out there. And I decided, you know what, I'm just not going to say anymore that I just want to be my own firm forever. Let me just see how it goes. <laughs> so uh, later that year, I signed up for CTC. I also signed up for uh, QuickBooks Connect, where I connected with another, with a coach. And before I connected with a coach, my mindset was like, who hires coaches? Right. Well, and it's funny here. I pulled up our notes from our conversation. You said, this is so great. You said everything at the moment in time, it was, by the way, October, 2018, you know, it costs a lot of money. I can't afford it. And there's not a lot of freedom with money. Those are your exact words, right? Does that all sound familiar? The no freedom with money sounds weird because it's not something I would say, but maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is what I said. I can't remember that part. I do remember the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, as I talked to you, then I signed up. I also decided to go to QuickBooks Connect because I was one of the, you know, top Front finalists. Of the future, yeah. So there I connected with a coach and I was this, I had this notion that what could they possibly teach me? <laughs> I know everything, right? But I think Tatiana, a lot of people listening have that same mindset and that process, right? But it, it it's like nobody is really training you on all these other elements of the business, right? On the technical side, probably you can get it. But like you said, it was a mindset shift. And how do you connect the dots? So when you're thinking about this coach and what could you possibly train me, like what was going on in your head? I just thought I, you know, I've been working with small businesses for at that point, 13 years. And I thought, you know what, like, I know pretty much everything. Like, what can I possibly learn from somebody else who's not even an accountant? <laughs> <laughs> you guys all probably think that of me. What does Michelle know? <laughs> so it's very, it's very, it's a limiting belief. And I've absolutely have done a 180 on, on that since then, because then I signed up for Jackie and Chuck's program. And what it gave me was freedom. So yes, it took a lot of work in the beginning. First six months were hell because I needed to implement, you know, new graphics, new campaigns, new everything that basically transformed my client experience. And because of that, that required a lot of time. And that happened to be during tax season. It's so funny because people, you know, I talk to a lot of accountants. Oh, Michelle, the, not a lot, but, the, you know, now is not a good time. I'm like, in the world of accounting, I don't think there's ever a good time. It's like every couple of months, there's a deadline, then it's tax season, then it's this, then it's that. But look at what happened because, and it's, it's really interesting because the people that do my eight week sales mastery training, Tatiana, during uh, January, January, February, March have the best results. It's like the most strenuous time, but I feel like maybe you actually got more practice. You were implementing your new client experience 
your clients experienced it. You, you have a touch point with everyone during tax season <laughs> and, and your revenue also, you know, it shows that it's tripled. Yeah. Well, it tripled as of now. So at that point, it's actually increased about 35%. So I had a like one thirty, 135% total. Thank you for the math. Thank you for the math. <laughs> well, we love numbers. I know. I need spreadsheets. <laughs> so I went into that program and what it allowed me to do and what was mind blowing is the efficiencies that like Chuck taught, the application of CTC that Jackie taught the templates, the processes, I would have probably gotten to that point on my own, but it would have taken me years to get there. And because of that program, because of CTC program, plus the concierge CPA, both of those have saved me years of, of time and I've gotten to that within six months. And that's what was mind blowing with my experience. And since then I've got trained in price psychology and I offer now that as a service to clients. So if they're kind of don't know what to charge or are making sales, but aren't necessarily profitable and they really can't reduce their expenses anymore. Maybe there's some rep repositioning that needs to happen with the pricing, mm -hmm. but you also have to do it carefully. So I help them with that. I also got trained in profit mm -hmm. first. So now I help clients be the masters of their cash flow. And I realized that my role as an accountant is a lot more than getting the stuff done. Because getting stuff done is what people need, but not necessarily care for. Let's put it this way. Clients hate doing taxes, well, preparing for taxes, paying taxes, paying someone to file their taxes. It's all a lot of kind of hate going on in, in that corner. But when you give people what they want and what they want is more money back in their pocket, it's that simple. That's when you start really building a relationship with a client and really coaching them to help them set their goals and reduce their debt and get out of their limiting beliefs and, and so on. So my job has transformed from just an accountant compliance to not only doing that, but doing some proactive tax planning, plus price psychology, plus some coaching too. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. So someone listening, right? They're, they're either in a job, they're on the verge of quitting, they're scared that their security net is about to go away. And they've always wanted to be their own boss. You know how many times I hear that, Tatiana, on a weekly basis? Oh, it's a lot. I want to be my own boss. But yet, they're not willing to make the leap of faith. You know, you can't be one foot in and one foot out. It's like it's time to jump in the pool and go swimming. We're going to go under the water. How did you get past some of those, you know, like you talked about your cocktail of pain? How did you get past some of the frustration, some of the fear, some of the anxiety, what, how, what to do next? When you made the decision, the first one was to enroll in CTC, however many months after you read that part of the book that you can't like do it alone from Dominique. But for someone listening, like what are the two things that you would have them do right now to, you know, I know you got past some of your mindset stuff on your own, which is pretty phenomenal. I always say it takes money to make money. You know, I'm not cheap. I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty penny to invest in, but you know what? You got a good ROI. CTC is the same way. But what did you do? I actually, you know, I use the same approach I've used a couple of times before in my life, maybe two or three times before. And oh. it was just, yeah, it's, I'll tell you the story. And um, I think you'll like it, actually. When I was uh, 17, our school had an exchange trip uh, with Germany, and it was my first trip abroad. And I'm, I'm from Belarus. So Germany is like one country away. So you were in Belarus and went to Germany. Yeah. For, for like two weeks or whatever that program was. And as part of the trip, they took us to a water park and I've never been to a water park before. So I like went on every slide there was like everything. Like I've explored all slides multiple times. I was like going crazy in there. People were probably looking at me and thinking like, she's insane. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there was this huge swimming pool, deep swimming pool, and there were three different diving boards and the top one was like 33 feet or whatever the equivalent of that in meters is in Germany. And I was like, you know what? I haven't tried that. And I need to, because maybe that's the last time I'm going abroad or whatever. <laughs> so I climb up, I go up the stairs and I wait my turn and I come to the edge of this diving board and I'm standing there and I'm looking down. And I'm suddenly I'm be beginning to be like, 
to feel terrified. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to hit the water and like die or like become disabled or whatever. And for a second, I like tried to like step away and maybe even go back. So I turn around (laughs) and I saw people kind of waiting in line for their turn kind of. So, and I felt embarrassed that, oh, you know what? She's like afraid to jump in, to dive in. And I thought for a second, I turned back to the edge of the board and I thought to myself, well, you know what? Somebody already ran the numbers. Somebody somebody already did the math. And if they (laughs) built this diving board this high, they know that the pool is deep enough and I'm not going to kill myself. Yeah. So I just gathered up my courage and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let the fear run my life and just dove in. And I mean, obviously I didn't die or nothing happened to me. But to me, that experience, I remembered that feeling, that experience. And then when I got pregnant with my daughter, I mean, every first time pregnancy is a little scary because you don't know anything. You're kind of hoping and praying for the best. And what I thought when, when I got pregnant, I was obsessed with that, with not having, um, not delivering up as a, you know, having a C-section. I, just, I don't know what happened to me, but like I had this in my head, this, I can't have it. And as soon as my fears started coming into my head, like thoughts with, with fears, I would start thinking, oh my God, like this is going to go so wrong. The, the kid is going to be born with defects or whatever. I pushed them away. I switched my mind to be thinking about something else. I was like, okay, what is that squirrel doing over there? So mm-hmm. I just switched, I forced my brain to switch the topic, to not even look back, to not even go there, yeah. to not let the fear drive my, my, the car of my life. Let's put it this way. Yeah. And then that creates the anxiety of what's not even true. That's coming in the future. It's, it's like a downward spiral. So for someone who's not going to go jump off a 33 foot diving board or 33 millimeter, I have a very similar kind of story, actually. I did this maybe two years ago, but I'm going to share it at the end. So you all have to, well, you know, listen at the end when I recap this whole episode. So you'll have to listen to it too, Tatiana. But what is something that you do today when this kind of fear, frustration, anxiety still comes up? Because it's not like it goes away. So I didn't actually finish that journey. So when I signed up for CTC and <laughs> for concierge CPA program, those fears, different fears. So a fear of losing money, of not getting your money back, of no guarantees and everything else, those came rushing into my brain. And I was like, Oh my God, like, what did I do or whatever? But I've decided, you know what? I've already made the commitment. I have a really good feeling about this and I'm just not going to look back and let the fear influence what I do. I'm just going to give it my 100%. And I did. So I saw results within two months Within three months, I had 135 percent, uh, you know, 35 percent uh, increase in my revenue, in my annual revenue, and things were just going up from there. I just never looked back. I invested in the programs, and I never looked back, mm-hmm. and that and, worked. And that's typically what will happen. It's just getting past that. So for you, you had to set those, you know, the fear of losing money and the no guarantees and all that just to the side and and put yourself in your mind off that diving board, 33 feet or meters in the air and just jump and know that you as an individual is what's going to create the results. You know, cause it's funny, Tatiana, I don't know if you did this, but I hear this a lot, even with my program. Oh, Michelle, can I, can I talk to someone else about, you know, how they did? And I'm like, this is about you, but sure. You can talk to anyone you want and you can watch every video on my website, but that doesn't do any good. Because your results are like what you said. You gave it your all is what you just said. And when we give it our all, then you're basically betting on yourself at that point. And there's no better person to bet on than yourself. That's the thing. Yeah. And many of us don't realize that, that there's, if there's anyone else in the world, if there's anyone in the world that I would bet on, that would be me. No, it's, it's, it's a hundred percent (laughs) accurate. So what do you feel was the biggest paradigm shift that you've had that got you to 300% increase in revenue, working only with bigger clients, writing a book and all the other stuff as we wrap up today. Like, what do you feel was the biggest paradigm shift that you've seen? The biggest paradigm shift came from CDC's program. And that was looking at a tax return and and thinking, well, how much time is it going to, okay, how complicated is this? How much time is it going to take me? How, like, 
what what else is involved and what else, what other services can I sell them looking at a tax return as that versus looking at a tax return and saying to yourself okay let me see what what can I squeeze out of this situation what else can I ask the client for what can I learn from them to save them money on tax it's a completely different mindset and once you get into that, you just can't go back to the same to the same approach. You're you, you never look at a tax return again the same way, which is interesting. That's very interesting. That is a really amazing paradigm shift, I must say. And if you learn anything from CTC, if it's just that one thing, uh, that's a pretty big paradigm shift that could generate tons of revenue because now you're looking at it like, what else can you offer them? How else can you support them? Profit first. You know, there's probably a million different things. So thank you for sharing that, Tatiana. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the listeners? I think you're an amazing quote unquote case study. So thank you for sharing your story with others who, you know, they might need to hear from a peer that some, this is possible because we do live vicariously through others at times. So this is your opportunity to live through someone else's story. But is there anything else you'd like to share with the listeners today? I'd like to share that we as accountants should not look at each other as competitors at all and should not price or compete with each other based on price or try to compete to allow clients to price shop. That's kind of one thing because there's so much work for everyone. And the reason that I wrote my book is that, that so that we as accountants can focus on better work, more higher service level to clients, as opposed to dealing with cleanups and setups and free questions and free tips that we provide so that clients can skip or we both can skip that time in a client's life where they need direction. So my book will provide them a direction, what to do, what to start with, what to do next. And Love so it. that book is not really competing with other accountants. It's actually making their life better and making the client's life also better. Yeah. So buy a book, give it to your clients for the holidays or just as an onboarding gift, you know, for any startup. I think that would be an amazing, unique client experience. You know, here's your homework. Before we start next week, read this book. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Are you going to tell us like what it's called and where we can buy it? Oh, of course. I mean, I'm sorry. I thought I did that. It's called Dream Bold, Start Smart. It's available for pre-order on Amazon. It will be primarily sold through Amazon and it's going to be released in March, March 16th. So it's coming soon. Awesome. That's March 16th, 2021, everybody. Tatiana, it was an honor to have you here on the Abundant Accountant Podcast. Keep thriving, keep growing. And, you know, we all, we always do that without being desperate and harassing. And you don't need to be a nag. So if that ever comes up, you, you can always call me. But thank you so much for being here. And it was an honor to have you. Thanks so much, Michelle. Thank you all so much for joining Tatiana and I on another amazing episode of the Abundant Accountant Podcast. You know, I, I have a story very similar to hers because you probably are wondering, well, Michelle, you know, I've never dived off a diving board. And for me, it was about two years ago, I did a personal development class, basically. Yeah, that's what it was. And one of the days we went to a ropes course. And if you've never been to a ropes course, make sure you go with other people and make sure you just put all your fears in the trash can before you go there. So anyway, imagine climbing like a telephone pole, like an electrician all the way to the top. And this beam starts to go back and forth, but you climb it like a ladder and you're on a harness. So you sort of have a safety net, but not really. It doesn't feel like it. And then you have to stand at the top of the pole with two feet and put your hands out on the side like you're a tree. Okay, that's what I did. Then from at the top of the pole, you jump onto a trapeze. And you hang on the trapeze. And then after you make that jump, then they, you know, repel you down. That was my physical experience of really overcoming fear. I mean, I think I got my first stint at it at Shark Tank because of what they put you through. But this was another good reminder that, you know, if you can do that, it doesn't matter about all those thoughts that you have about, oh, my God, am I going to invest in you know, Michelle or CTC or Jackie's program or whatever coach you're about to hire, you're betting on yourself. And if like Tatiana said, and how I feel too, there's no better person to bet on than me because I am in control of what happens. So if I put in the work or I put in the effort and I do my best, then I know the results that will come from it. And I think that's goes the same for you. 
So maybe there's something, you know, a little scary you could do. Uh, I have an idea. I did this last weekend. It wasn't as scary because I think I've done enough, enough other scary stuff, but I went to this place called iFly where basically it's like indoor skydiving. You're, you're really low to the ground, but you have that like jolt of little fear. And if you can put yourself through physical experience, overcome it, then when you have that mindset shift in a physical stent, sense, then when you're dealing with it in your business, it will be much easier to say, oh, that's like when I was at iFly. I need to shift. I can do it. I've got this. And you can get past those fears of, you know, it's too good to be true or, you know, that's a lot of money to invest. I can't afford it. Whatever those fears of or anxiety or frustrations that come up, it's what physical fear can you co- overcome to have something that can change your state of mind? So that would be my two cents for you. And if you go to a ropes course, enjoy. It's very scary, freaky. But after you're done, you're like, wow, I can't believe I overcame that. And if your accounting practice is not where you truly want it to be, um, I get it. You know, a lot of accounting clients that I work with are frustrated, stuck, and in the in the sphere of fear. And what I found is that, you know, when we're not charging what we're worth and we don't have a solid system in place to work with to get high paying clients, we're on like this hamster wheel. So having this information of this program and other things that I can really support you with called the selling without ever selling system will give you the confidence to position yourself as an expert, get consistent, high quality clients coming through your door and really have the confidence to have people say yes to you with paying what you're worth, not what you think they they can afford. So if you want to build the firm, like Tatiana said, the firm of the future, and really feel confident in selling higher value services with ease. And so you can spend more time with your family or, you know, like Tatiana, write a book and live that life of abundance and purpose that you truly want. Then head on over to theabundantcall.com. We will together explore and discover where are some of the truths about what some next best steps are for you and your firm. So once again, it's theabundantcall.com. I look forward to talking to some of you. Just make sure you've had your accounting business at least two years before you book your call, okay? And have a beautiful day.